Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today we are here for an update on the investigation into the recent spat of fires. Uh, with that, we'll keep it very brief. I'm going to introduce, first we'll have Mayor Prince, followed by Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Brendan Iber, with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Lake County Prosecutor Bernard Carter, Gary Fire Department Chief Sean O'Donnell, Gary Police Department Chief Brian Evans, and Councilman Brewer is here, Von Brewer is here. Uh, and uh, with that, I will, it, we will make some comments and then afterwards we'll open up to media questions. And with that, I give you Mayor Prince. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. Uh, as Michael said, we're here today to discuss the rash of recent fires that took place in the city of Gary. Last weekend, about 1045, we uh, were notified or actually noticed that there were uh, multiple fires in various locations across the city. Today, we're joined by our police and fire chief, uh, Chief Brian Evans of the Gary Police Department, as well as Chief Sean O'Donnell of the Gary Fire Department. Immediately, both of those gentlemen began investigations, but it became very evident to us that this is a recurring event uh, as one had occurred or situations occurred on April 21st, which was about three weeks earlier. To that extent, we uh, got together and found out and discovered that it was in our best interest to seek and bring in all the resources that we possibly could in order to not only come up with the, uh, an answer to the uh, uh, impetus of these uh, fires, but also uh, to make sure that we protect our citizens in the best possible way that we can. And the way that we do that is by making sure that all the resources that are available or all the tools that we have at our disposal are used. And to that extent, uh, we were pleased to be assisted or are pleased to be assisted by um, the ATF and shortly thereafter you'll hear comments from uh, ASAC, uh, Brendan Iber of uh, ATF and uh, after that you'll hear from our prosecutor as well as police chiefs and the uh, brief comments from Gary Common Council. I will point out that this is an active investigation so uh, very specific information in terms of uh, things that you guys might want to know probably won't be able to be shared today but to that extent uh, Special Agent Iber certainly will tell you about the resources that are going to be lent to this. The only request that I have of the speaker who come after uh, Special Agent Iber is that we keep them very brief in the essence of time. Without further delay, I'd like to bring up Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Brendan Iber. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Good afternoon. As the Mayor pointed out, my name is Brendan Iber. I'm the <coughs> Assistant Special Agent in Charge of ATF Chicago Field Division. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Farms, and Explosives, ATF, is the federal agency primarily responsible for administering and enforcing the criminal and regulatory provisions of the federal laws pertaining to destructive devices, explosives, and arson. We're here today to lend investigative resources to both the Gary Fire and Police Departments to address the recent rash of fires that occurred over the weekend. <clears throat> We're here to partner to investigate the cause and origin of these fires and determine if they were intentionally set. And if they were, obviously that's a crime and, and we refer to that as, as arson. A little bit of background on, on ATF is, is over nearly 40 years, ATF has developed scientifically proven investigative capabilities, expertise, and resources that have positioned ATF as the nation's primary source for explosive and fire investigative knowledge and assistance. ATF has certified fire investigators, which we call CFIs. Uh, they are special agents, but they've received highly specialized training in investigating fire scenes and arson-related crimes. We have about 105 of these CFIs across the country, which allows us to rapidly deploy these expert special agents to fire scenes to identify, collect, and analyze arson-related evidence. ATF CFIs provide expertise and guidance to our partners on fire origin and cause determinations, violent crime investigations involving the violent crime of arson and arson for profit, as well as provide expert testimony in the courtroom. Felony arson investigation is part of ATF's mission to provide a front line against violent crime. Felony arson can be committed by people with criminal intentions, 
such as insurance fraud, to cover up for other crimes, and in some cases murder. We're going to ask today for the public's assistance in these rash of, of fires that, that occurred over the weekend. And so we ask if you have any, of, any information about any of these incidents, please contact ATF at 1-888-ATF-FIRE. That's A-T-F-F-I-R-E. Additionally, if you have access to email, you can email any information to atftips at atf.gov. And with that being said, I'll turn it over to Lake County Prosecutor, Mr. Bernard Carter. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my office, the Lake County Prosecutor's um, uh, Attorney's Office, as well as the United States Attorney's Office, are two of the um, prosecuting agencies that will look at any conduct uh, in regards to what uh, you just heard about these arsons. In fact, we do a, quite a bit of prosecution in arson cases. We have a jury trial going next week involving an arson case. Uh, we will work and cooperate, as the, um, the mayor has indicated, with uh, federal authorities as well as state authorities uh, to investigate and bring charges against anyone who have committed or, or will commit these offenses. In addition to that, um, as far as the statutory uh, charges in, in cases of this matter, it goes from anywhere from a level four to a level three to a level two. The level four um, and, and level three and level two, you, you're looking at in excess of 20 years in the Department of Corrections if convicted of this offense. We certainly will seek, and I certainly want to make that very clear, we will seek the highest penalty that we can under state law. Um, I'm here to cooperate, I'm here to work with the federal th authorities as well as the state authorities, uh, fire department, state, state fire marshal, you name it, we're gonna do whatever it takes. Uh, one of the things I would echo um, is that anybody out there who has any information, please provide it to us. We know in most of these crimes, individuals know someone or hear some, overhear someone speak in reference to this or may have seen something. Anything so slight, please notify us uh, so we can apprehend the individual or individuals who may uh, be guilty of, of these offenses. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, I'm Chief Sean O'Donnell of the Gary Fire Department. Uh, the city of Gary was uh, impacted by approximately 15 building fires on Saturday, May 1st, uh, over a long period of time in the, in the uh, evening hours starting about 10.45 at night into Sunday, May 2nd. Arriving firefighters, they're faced with the, um, numerous residential structures, all of which are currently presumed vacant and unoccupied in various stages of fire advancement. Some of these buildings were fully involved upon arrival of the first arriving engine companies. Uh, firefighters worked feverishly throughout the night to contain these fires and reduce the risk of exposures to other occupied buildings and structures. We received assistance uh, from numerous communities and are grateful to those firefighters uh, for their help in responding and putting their own lives at risk to help the citizens of the city of Gary. So we're very, very thankful for our, our firefighters. They did a phenomenal job out there and of our surrounding communities did a phenomenal job coming in to assist us. Uh, each fire right now is currently being viewed as a separate incident at this time. To the public, it may appear that these fires could be the result of foul play. We understand that. This isn't a television show or a movie where we're able to quickly connect the dots and determine who done it. This will take time and extensive effort from our team of investigators, and we hope to come to a conclusion based on the facts gathered during the investigative process. For now, we are considering each of these fires to be suspicious. Um, what we don't want to see is fires occur and jeopardize the safety of our citizens, much less that of our firefighters. Together, we can make a difference and make Gary a safer place to live. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Brian Evans, Chief of the Gary Police Department. We are currently working collaboratively with our partners from the Gary Fire Department, the, uh, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and our State Fire Marshal Service, along with our own internal investigators 
and our CSI investigators to collect and gather evidence so that we can determine the nature of the fire that happened and bring someone or persons to justice if we can uh, find evidence that these were at foul play. They're all considered suspicious. They're all open investigations. And a fire, an arson, is a crime. And it's one that can cause a a great deal of damage to not only <coughs> the surrounding community, but it jeopardizes the lives of our men and women of the Bay Fire Department, as well as our citizens. On this night, it was a very windy night, and we were just very grateful that no other structures caught fire, and that all of the structures that did catch fire seemed to be unoccupied or abandoned, and thus no loss of lives occurred from these fires. As I said, this is ongoing investigations, and we're also looking at the uh, previous fires from a few weeks ago and since, and we're trying to determine if they're all connected or if they're all separate. Again, this is an active investigation. If you have information, along with the tip line that the ATF provided, we have a tip line here in Gary called the uh, GPD tip line. It's 1-866-CRIME-GP. That's 1-866-274-6347. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, on May 1st, I received on the first, I arrived on the first scene of one of the fires there shortly after 11 o'clock. Um, wasn't too long after that I notified our mayor to make sure that he knew exactly what was taking place and he did know exactly what was going on. Um, as I demonstrated to the mayor, I was at one scene there where I saw two houses exactly going up in flames there with no um, fire equipment available at that time to be there. We did have mutual aid that was called in, but it drained the resources of our region. And we're grateful to our mutual aid partners and surrounding communities and all the hard work that they did in coming in to assist us in these concerns with these fires. Um, I also want to ask the public, as it was stated earlier, that if you see something, say something. Please be more vigilant about your community, different ones around that you're not normally used to seeing. Um, if you can, take a license plate number down and just hold on to it. That information could be some serious information that we may need in the future. So I'm asking every citizen, please be more vigilant of what's taking place inside your neighborhood. Thank you all. Sir, I'm sorry. Ron Brewer, City Councilman at Large, Public Safety Chair. Spell your name. Ron, R-O-N, last name B-R-E-W-E-R. Uh, Council President William Godwin is coming at this time. Thank you, Councilman Brewer, and protocol having been established, I want to first wish uh, our men and women who wear the firefighter's uniform a happy International Firefighters Day. Uh, we often don't recognize the extent to which we need them uh, until there is a fire. And so we know that this is not a singular occurrence. This is something that has happened for years, with these sporadic fires that are inexplicable. I think from a council perspective, uh, it's very important that our public safety committee, which Councilman Brewer, who you just heard from, leads, uh, looks closely at the resources and capacity, uh, both human capital and physical capital, uh, of our fire department to ensure we have the trucks, we have the ladders, we have the engines, and the coverage that we need uh, to respond to these crises. Uh, we don't think about it until there is a problem, but this is an opportunity uh, for us to take a deep dive at where we are committing our resources and our dollars in the city uh, to ensure we are adequately protected and adequately covered. Again, I want to thank the men and women in uniform uh, who so bravely fought along with uh, various agencies around the region. Thank you. Say and spell your name, please. William Godwin, W-I-L-L-I-A-M. Godwin, G-O-D-W-I-N. President of the Gary Cummins Council. And before the mayor comes up, there's a list of the speakers and the names and spellings are in the back. So at this time, we'll uh, take media questions and please specify who the question is directed to. I think there's one in the rear. Hi, this is for um, Mr. Orford, Chief O'Donnell. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if, or, um, if you can tell us where these, uh, where these homes were located. The, the homes were located in numerous areas throughout the city. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to our friends from our partners from ATF to, 
to spe specify what they would, uh, the in information we can give out, but there was in numerous areas throughout the city. Can you talk about, there were some fires weeks ago, and then the council president also talked about fires over the years. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit, if you know, um, maybe just the fire from a couple weeks ago? Yes, we had a few fires a couple weeks ago, uh, some multiple fires uh, in the middle of the night going at the same time. Our, our partners with ATF and Gary Police are also assisting us with those investigations uh, to see if any correlations to anything. Like I said, each fire is right now deemed at this time to be suspicious. And uh, unfortunately, it's a common occurrence in an urban city that we've had uh, fires over the years. I mean, it's with any type of inner city. How we have the young lady over here and then uh, Robbie in the I, rear. I just wanted to know how many fires it was a couple weeks ago. A pro, uh, approximately uh, seven structure fires. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? Um, Chief, I know that all these buildings were um, believed to be unoccupied and vacant, but are you aware of whether firefighters evacuated any nearby buildings that were occupied as a safety precaution? No, there was no need to uh, evacuate anybody. Mr. Bajor. Uh Thanks very much, Chair. Chief, uh, can you describe anything about the evidence that suggests this is all suspicious and maybe that they're linked? No, sir, not at that time. That'll be for uh, ATF to discuss, and we don't want to compromise any investigation. How different does the evidence look from the previous situations? I'm sorry? How different does the evidence that you have look from previous situations that you've encountered? That's not right now up for discussion. I'm sorry. 411. Okay. Uh, now, there's 15 fires, but seven structure fires, so there was land fires, burnings that were not structures. I think when you started, you so, said there were So the seven that he was talking about was actually a couple weeks ago. Oh, and, okay. And this time there were approximately 15. Were these all structures? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So just be, so seven structure fires from a few weeks ago and then 15 structure fires now, correct? Correct. correct. Okay, so that's out of the way. The uh, other question I have, is there is there any type of surveillance video or anything that would lead to an arrest or even at least let us know any type of sus suspect description, groups, individuals, <coughs> anything? I wouldn't be at liberty to discuss that right now. As I said, uh, that'll be for our, our partners in ATF to discuss any type of uh, further information that they can let out, but that is not out for public knowledge or anything. Were all of those structures and total walls as well, or were you able to say those? Um, a lot of the structures were were uh, severely damaged. We're gonna take a few more questions. I got Mr. Bajewal, Natalie, and the young lady over here, please. Mayor, maybe you can comment on this. Though it's periodic, and though we've seen this happen before, in in Gary, uh, the places. What does it do to the city that has been through so much to see this level of destruction happen over and over again, where there's such few answers? What does it do? Politically, emotionally, all the rest of it. So, so, Mr. Bajwal, I think you can answer it a couple different ways. Uh, it, it's certainly demoralizing, uh, certainly to our men and women who are out here uh, operating in many instances, as one of the councilmen alluded to, with, uh, with minimal resources. Uh, but the other side of it is I believe that moments like this actually show the true resilience of our officers particularly uh, the men and women of the fire department, but also of the Gary Police Department. Also, it shows the network and the support and the gravity of that network as our uh, partners from across the region continue to assist us as we do them in the need of, uh, in time of need. So, uh, short story is, uh, obviously there are a number of emotions that are experienced, but Gary is a community that has certainly been known for comebacks, and I believe that this will be a, uh, certainly exemplified in this particular instance also. Natalie, and then the young lady over here. Natalie, what? Yes, sir. Natalie. Yeah, uh, the numbers that you gave out, are any of those anonymous, or does the person have to identify themselves when they call into these numbers, as well as there's a rumor mill that say that there was some uh, gold vehicle that's been spotted so I'm almost certain that the call-in numbers will receive any information. If a person doesn't want to identify themselves, the officers and the agents will certainly receive that information. In terms of the latter question, we aren't at liberty to answer that. I'm going to take the young lady over here and the gentleman right here, and uh, we'll have to wrap it up, folks. Thank you. Do 
So many of the structures were more than likely tapped for demolition already, uh, but to your question, having a fire set to them and uh, the condition being exacerbated certainly would warrant them uh, elevating to a priority status, and to that extent, I would imagine they'd be demolished in short order. Uh, the gentleman, and I believe that was you. Yes, sir. So there, there is a request from the city to have folks come forward if they know something or they've heard something. But a lot of times that's easier said than done. People are afraid to come forward sure. because of <clears throat> retaliation. What is the message you have for the people directly dealing with that? But also, too, with the fires in the city, now that you guys are addressing them, is there an, an increase in patrol? So uh, the first part of your question, we just can do our best to continue to encourage our residents that any information that they share will be uh, utilized in confidence and to that extent, that's why we alluded to anyone who doesn't want to share their information in terms of uh, where they are or their name for that matter, certainly don't have to. In terms of increased patrol, we're constantly looking at different ideas and opportunities uh, to not only increase patrol, but utilize technology in order to assist our men and women in performing their jobs a little bit better and more efficiently. Mr. Mark, can we ask the ATF uh, one more question, folks, and then we have to wrap up. Yes. Can we just ask the ATF about how they're Absolutely. going to conduct this investigation, how it's going to go? Special Agent Ivory. Yes, Mr. Mark, can we ask the ATF about how they're going to conduct this investigation, how it's going to go? Special Agent Ivory. What we're doing with these 15 and these other seven, how you guys are going to conduct your investigation? Yeah, so right now I, I'd probably ask uh, Chief Evans to come up here because, um, as, I, as I alluded to in, in, my, in my opening, there is we're just assisting at this point. So, this is, this is really a, a Gary Police and, and Gary Fire. We're just lending our, our certified fire investigators to do some origin and cause and, and help them out. But, but these, we're just partnering with them. They, they actually have the lead in, in this particular case. Chief, can you kind of speak to what? officers We created a team of investigators that include our investigators, our arson investigators, our CSI techs, along with agents from the ATF and the state fire marshals to put a task force together to investigate this collaborative. If I could speak to the previous question, the tip line for Gary PD is a anonymous line and you don't have to leave your name or identifiers in any of the information that you provided to us. We respect your right for privacy and the fact that people are afraid of retaliation and thus those lines and any way you give us information is completely, completely anonymous. Thank you, Chief. So at this time we're going to conclude. I want to definitely say a special thank you to Special Agent Iber, Lake County Prosecutor Bernard Carter, our councilman who joined us today, certainly our police and fire chief, and of course to all of you for covering this story. Thank you for everything that you do, and thank you for uh, everything that you will do for us in the future. Have a good afternoon.